Modern cinema. We've reached a point where there's many rules established regarding filmmaking. There's a line, and most directors don't dare cross it. Whether we talk about the rule of thirds, transitions, or anything of the sort, most, if not all directors, create films by the books. But what happens when there are no rules to follow? Shockingly, there was a time before cinema. People had to find other forms of entertainment instead. One of these sources being stage magic. So wait, is, is sorcery science or magic? Yes and yes. George Melies, the main topic of this video, started out as a magician. This was right around the 1890s when film had just been invented. Yet, current popular filmmakers had barely scratched the surface. Early films were simply technological showcases. To most, the concept of film was magic, but the content itself barely mattered. However, after seeing the Lumiere Brothers film, Workers Leaving the Lumiere Factory, Melies decided to acquire a camera system himself and began making his own films. With his knowledge of illusion, Melies took film in a different turn. He discovered the use of transitions from his camera jamming in the middle of a take, and he would often utilize what would be referred to as cutting, or editing as we call it today. We see examples of this in his films The Magic Lantern, The Astronomer's Dream, and most famously, A Trip to the Moon. More importantly though, George Melies brought something more significant to film. He brought the concept of fictional stories. Up until Melies, the majority of films were actuality films, or nonfiction. All that we saw was real life. A train arriving, people leaving a factory, and... A man flexing. Melies made stories that were very clearly fictitious. He used sets, costumes, and props that weren't normal to create an original story beyond the reality of our world. I mean, his film A Trip to the Moon entertains the idea of space travel, when we wouldn't land on the moon for the first time until 67 years later. Sadly, despite all that George Méliès did for cinema, he got left behind as a new wave of film began. World War I was around the corner, and his films were declining in performance. He had been doing great, as he produced over 50 productions in 1908, according to the Google Arts and Culture page dedicated to Méliès. However, in 1911, he would contract himself to the film company Pate. In 1912, he would produce his last three films. After this, Méliès' contract was over, and with none of his recent films being successful, he was bankrupt. To make ends meet, he sold sweets and toys at the Montparnasse station in Paris. Skipping ahead to 1923, Méliès' theatre, Theatre Robert Houdin, was torn down. In reaction to this, he decided to burn the negatives of many of his films, resulting in only around 200 to still exist today. He would eventually pass away in 1938 in Paris. His last known words are, Laugh, my friends. Laugh with me. Laugh for me. Because I dream your dreams. Fortunately, we of course know about Méliès, and he is now recognized for the inspiration he has given to many. The 2011 film Hugo, directed by Martin Scorsese, features George Méliès as a character, and the film is largely inspired by his work. A Trip to the Moon, specifically, is referenced in countless examples of television and film. Futurama did an entire episode motifed around it. Hi, I'm Craterface. Welcome to Luna Park. I'll have to confiscate your alcohol, sir. Better mascots than you have tried. <laughs> I know, Craterface. I know. Without your Papa Meliès, we wouldn't have movies like Interstellar, Asteroid City, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Inception, The Matrix, etc. 
Georges Méliès brought forward abstract concepts, narrative structures, and overall production quality. Though he wound up underappreciated for some time, Méliès' work still proved itself worthy of preservation. To this day, we can still learn from his films from over a hundred years ago. So thank you, you sweet cinemagician, and good night. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you're a subscriber of mine, sorry it's been a minute since I've uploaded. Uh, this is actually, uh, it's kind of for a class, it is for a class project, but it's also something I've wanted to do, and um, I got the option to do a video essay, so I did that, and figured I can post it here as well. Um, if you're my professor watching, I hope you liked it. Um, that's kind of all I have. Thanks.